Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, for those kind words and for your inspired leadership of our most important institution and for your friendship to all of us. And uh, Dean Bloomberg, thank you for getting this idea and driving it through the bureaucracy uh, <laughs> to point to the point we can celebrate tonight. And you, you are as good a dean as we've ever had, maybe the best. And I really enjoy working with you. We're, we're blessed to have Laura with us. Uh, she's got drive. I, I don't know. She's like, Humphrey always had an extra engine. Where's, where's Hubert Jr.? You're around here. You know what I mean. He never had to sleep. He just kept going. And that's what Laura's got an ex extra engine. Uh, she's going to Norway. She's going to, where have you been? China. China? Yeah, that's just around the block. And, uh, and here she is helping us move this most essential institution, this Humphrey School, forward to play the role that it must. We have so many people here tonight. Please pardon me for uh, missing a lot of you. Joan Groves here. God bless her. Uh, I saw Mike Freeman a minute ago. We're so glad to have him here great name, just lost his mother, um, and um, Sam and Sylvia Kaplan, uh, former ambassador to Morocco, one of our most important citizens, a real team, and we're glad to have Sam and Sylvia with us tonight. We got a lot of judges. You know, I, I like judges. <laughs> I, I really wanted to be one, but they wouldn't put me there, so <laughs> I was left to politics. We got uh, Associate Justice David Littlehog. Where are you, David? You're still okay. Raise your hand. So, what, what are you hiding behind there? <laughs> and uh, District Judge and Chief Judge of our district, Jack Tonheim. He was here. And uh, I want to say a special word to Marge Spanis. As you know, a few months ago, Minnesota lost one of its most important and magnificent public servants in Warren Spanis. Marge is here tonight. Let's give Marge a big hand for being here. And a moment ago, I saw Betty McCollum, the Congress, the great congresswoman from across the river. Where are you? Yeah. Don't, don't, don't be shy, Betty. Just get right in there. Uh, uh, Peggy Lucas, are you? I heard she was here. Uh, give her my, okay, good. My, my neighbor, bring over some more food, will you, so I can live through this. Um, tonight we um, were also blessed by a secret group that arrived here. These were Jones classmates from the 1948 class at Summer School. We've got uh, Debbie Bancroft, we had uh, Millicent Lang, and we have Sally Lehman. Let's give them all a hand for coming over. And then, then we have a, a, a person that needs to be recognized. It's George Millard. George brought the ladies over. He is a, a, a graduate, I think, of 1948. St. Paul uh, Academy, and he is, uh, well, let's admit it, he's my fishing buddy, <laughs> and, and you can't get more sacred than that, but, but one more thing, he asked Joan out to her first date after she arrived in Minnesota, so let's give George a big hand <laughs> for that. Uh, And to all of you who should have been recognized, please blame my speechwriter. Uh, I just want to say two things. I'm old enough to have been around when we were sitting down with Hubert at a time when he was starting to fail to try to work up an idea so that his life could live on. 
and we could have something that Humphrey truly believed in as a way of remembering and honoring him. And I'll never forget, there were about eight or 10 of us there, and he said, the main thing is I don't want a dead memorial. I don't want people around here just honoring that old guy and how he died and stuff like that. He said, I want a place that's alive where young people can get educated and reach their dreams. That's what this should all be about. And the whole idea of the Humphrey School was built around that dynamic concept. And boy, has it been alive. Has it given young people now for, what is it, 47, 48 years now it's been here. And helping young people all over get a chance. And I hear from young people all the time about how they got their start here. And I'm, I'm really proud of them. And look at this school now. Um, we started out, brand new school, not knowing quite what we were doing, and now we're, I think, the eighth most... Eighth in rank, the top ten. Uh, third, the third best. <laughs> school. I, I've always been good with numbers. <laughs> but it, a great school, and, and national and international recognition, drawing powerful faculty, and the best student body, we got to be proud of that. Uh, and then I want to step down with this point. This uh, atrium, this commons, is now going to be, thank you, God bless you, named for Joan and me. Uh, I am so glad we're doing something to remember Joan. Uh, she was my partner, and boy, was she a partner. We, we got things done, we traveled, and, but she always insisted that her life was hers. And she was going to do things where she uh, made her statement. She'd support me, which she surely did. She'd gone campaign for me. But deep down, she also had something else to say. And what she had to say is so beautifully reflected in what we are dedicating today. And that was the arts and the relation of the arts and ceramics. Um, uh, when we'd been in Japan for four years and she was throwing pots and talking to her friends over there about the arts and I was selling auto parts. <laughs> and when, <laughs> when it was over and we had a farewell ceremony, I had a trickle of people who wanted to say goodbye to me and the whole room was full of people who wanted to say goodbye to Joan. They loved Joan. Joan went out of there a hero and a saint. And I think what this says is that in public life, where possible, where we should encourage not just the principal, but the, the couple, if they're married, to work together and to allow us to get two for one. And that's been part of the secret of progressivism in Minnesota. Hubert and Muriel, they were everywhere together, and Muriel was everywhere together. Orv and um, Jane Freeman, who we just spoke about a minute ago, they were always there. Don and Arvon, I don't know if they're here, but they were always here. And again and again, we've, and Sam and Sylvia, another good example, again and again, we found if you do it together, it's always better. So thank you very much and good night. Let's invite Ted and William to do the official honors because I'm sure you're really gonna be surprised at what it says underneath this ribbon up here. And if all goes according to plan, this will work. But I'm gonna cover my head just in case. Stay, enjoy, eat, socialize, and have a wonderful evening. Thanks so much for being here.